Since old Booster 9 back there had a successful static fire last week, we're now in the final phase of preparation ahead of Starship's next integrated flight test. SpaceX has been busy as a space beaver. Star beaver? All around the Boca Chica facility. So let's take a look at where everything stands ahead of the next flight of Starship, hopefully in just a few weeks. Howdy, Star fans. Welcome to this week's Starbase Update. Before we turn our attention to the current flight vehicles, let's start with everything that has happened at the production site. After the mid-bay demolition, cleanup is still ongoing to clear all the debris left from the disassembly of the building, as well as Tent 1 and Tent 2. The question now is, what will happen to the space that was previously occupied by these buildings? Will the Star Factory building just expand and take their place? Will a new mega bay go in place of the mid-bay? Will the ring yard just disappear? We'll have to wait and find out, as usual, but at least for now, we can enjoy these epic new views we have inside the high bay. Next up this week, we spotted one of those new white circular structures that had been assembled at the Sanchez site. It got rolled out and moved in front of the Starbase sign. There's another one of these white structures, as well as two similar but distinct black ones being built at the Sanchez lot. It remains unclear what these will be used for, as they're too small to be a second orbital launch mount but they could be related to assembly or working on a stack, as the circular shape, of course, makes it clear that SpaceX will use it in conjunction with vehicles. But it's kind of hard to say exactly what until we see it in use. A notable indicator of their potential use is where SpaceX moved this first white circular structure, and that was into the Mega Bay. This move makes it almost certain that it will be involved with welding or assembling of boosters, as that's what the Mega Bay is for. A common theory is use as a Raptor installation platform for inside the Mega Bay. Maybe these new structures will make things more manageable or faster to install engines on boosters. But once again, it's hard to say until we actually see it in use. Either way though, I can't wait to find out. Moving right along, Ship 31's nose cone was outside the high bay this week, but only briefly as it was soon rolled inside the building and stacking of Ship 31 began. This now makes three ships under construction inside the high bay. That's Ship 29, Ship 30, and now Ship 31, which will join the others waiting for their ride to space. Speaking of other ships, we've noticed some ongoing TPS work on Ship 30, which was moved from the stacking area of the high bay over to the TPS and work area of the high bay, which of course cleared the way for stacking of Ship 31. So once again, that now makes three vehicles inside the high bay in production, Plus, of course, Ship 25 getting ready for flight, Ship 28 getting ready for a static fire test campaign, and Ship 26 um, doing something? I mean, for real, it's probably just waiting to be scrapped, but shh, we, we, don't, we don't have to tell it that. Either way, the scale and number of ships SpaceX is producing at this point is seriously impressive. Next up, the Star Factory building expansion is also advancing as more and more walls and roof segments are going up. Just to recap, the Star Factory building is slowly but surely taking the place of all three production tents, and then some, and will become the place where all of the work that was previously done in them on ship and booster sub assemblies is done in the future. Come to think of it, I haven't seen a dome get sleeved or flipped in quite some time, so the currently small operational portion of the Star Factory must already be making its mark. Over at the ring yard, it's been a daily flurry of activity. A lot of partially stacked ships and boosters are waiting there for their turn to be assembled into a vehicle. Speaking of future vehicles, this week the forward section, that's the methane tank of Booster 12, was stacked atop the aft section of Booster 12, which is of course the LOX tank. So now we have yet another booster complete inside the Mega Bay, as SpaceX is clearly getting ready to dramatically increase the cadence of Starship launches, you know, once they figure out the whole rock tornado thing, which, given the new deflector plate, hopefully has been solved. Following previous boosters' flows, Booster 12 will first go to Massey's, be cryo-tested, then come back to the production site where it will receive its engines, a hot stage ring, then it'll get static fired and be fully ready for flight. So, a lot to be done yet for Booster 12, but again, SpaceX is clearly setting up to increase Starship's launch rate. 
So now, in addition to the five or six-ish ships that SpaceX has ready to go, they now have four boosters in various stages of production. That's booster nine, booster 10, booster 11, and booster 12. And no, I'm not forgetting about booster four, it's just no longer a viable flight article. All right, hold on to your hats, buckos, because now it's time for the really exciting part of this week's update. Stairs! We saw more stairs lifted inside the Mega Bay. That's it! That's the whole update! Stairs! But wait, there's more! Call 555-SHIP-NOW and you can get even more stairs! Just pay shipping and handling! Stack them in the Mega Bay! Stack them at the launch site! The possibilities are endless! And I'd like to point out that uh, Adrian apologized in the script for writing that, so you can, you can thank Adrian for that. Speaking of thanking Adrian, he runs the store, and if you want to make him happy, you can run on over to shop.nensaspaceflight.com and, I don't know, pick up the new retro Starbase shirt. Moving on, over at the launch site, there have been several additions to the orbital tank farm. We saw the delivery of multiple subcoolers to the orbital tank farm that will help to cryogenically cool Starship's propellant before loading it onto the vehicles. While we don't expect these to be installed in time for IFT2, although I guess they could be, Either way, they will be dramatically improving the speed of propellant loading into Starship in the future. Next up, work, of course, continues on the orbital launch mount. We saw the comeback of the ventilation tube, which is once again attached to the orbital launch mount's side. We also saw a new chopstick part installed on top of the chopsticks. Sadly, we don't know what precisely this is for. It could be reinforcements of a weak part of them, or even a replacement for a broken part. Who knows? Once all this work was done, the chopsticks were raised a little bit and then lowered again. Maybe a verification test of the work that was performed? Also this week, the LR11000 crane at the launch site moved over to the orbital launch pad. And you know what makes a comeback now? That's right, stairs. It lifted a massive staircase up next to the orbital launch tower and installation of it on the tower began. Now since this is a staircase for Starship, I guess you could call it a star case? Really? He... Adrian wrote this. I didn't write this. Moving along, we also saw the installation of a methane pump, which will join the methane side of the tank farm in the future. Once again, another thing that will dramatically improve propellant loading on vehicles going forward. All right, all joking aside, now let's talk about the stars of today's show, the flight test vehicles to be used for integrated flight test two. Ship 25 is still getting work done on its new thermal protection system tiles where previously crane attachment points were installed. You can clearly see these newly added tiles because they're still black and shiny. It's unclear what exactly SpaceX is doing here as the tiles have been installed for a little bit, but it might just be final inspections ahead of stacking as this area is not accessible once the vehicle is fully stacked. A much cooler thing that happened with Ship 25 this week, in case you missed it, is that it got its livery. That's right. It got the X logo and S25 decals on the side, similar to what Ship 24 got ahead of its flight. Although, one of those S25 labels looks upside down to me, and now I can't unsee it, but still looks cool. Next up, we have an exciting development with Booster 9, and that is that SpaceX crews were working on its flight termination system. Booster 9's FTS has been modified to hold even more explosives after the, shall we say, non-optimal FTS activation on IFT-1. Furthermore, SpaceX is clearly preparing to load Booster 9 with its FTS charges soon, as evidenced by delivery of those charges to the launch site as the same day this work took place. This is one of the final major work points for the booster before its flight which of course is fantastic news. An additional note here, while we saw charges delivered to the launch site and we saw work on the FTS system, that does not mean those charges have been installed and it certainly doesn't mean the FTS system is armed because you know, explosives. Once it gets armed, the entire area becomes a hazard area. Until SpaceX is ready to go, the FTS remains unarmed. And for all we know, the charges are just sitting at the launch site and have not even been installed yet. Of course, we'll be watching closely for any future developments here. On the regulatory side, the FAA still needs to wrap up its mishap investigation into the first integrated flight test. This absolutely needs to happen before the second flight. 
We have seen some early marine notices about a potential flight on September 8th, but with the current status of Starbase, a flight that early is probably a bit optimistic. On the positive side, a general launch date in September doesn't seem unlikely at all. If I were a betting man and I wanted to answer the million dollar question of when will it launch, I would guess September 25th. Although, that, I must be clear, is a total guess out of the blue. It could easily happen before then, or after. Once the investigation is complete, and the launch license is in place, we need an evacuation notice, FAA notice to air mission, and marine warnings, and then we are good to go for the next Starship flight test, at least from a regulatory perspective. On the vehicle side, work needs to wrap up on Ship 25. Of course, it needs to roll to the launch site, be stacked atop Booster 9, and then we expect a full wet dress rehearsal, or at least some propellant loading tests. Then, they will de-stack the ship, just as we saw with the Ship 24 and Booster 7, arm the ship's FTS and the booster's FTS, restack the vehicles, and then we're in business. Now, I know that sounds like a lot, but we're getting closer and closer every day. And before you know it, IFT2 will be upon us. So if you're planning on seeing this in person, start figuring out logistics now. All right, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching, and as always, don't forget, be excellent to each other.